Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Chevy Malibu Hybrid. And so as you can tell, you could probably can't hear much and that's because the engine isn't running currently. So at low speeds, you know, it can shut off and just let the electric motor do the work. There's actually two electric motors and then there's a 1.8 liter gasoline engine. And this is a traditional cycle. It doesn't use Atkinson or anything like that. It does have a fairly high compression ratio. I believe it's around 11.5 to one. And in this video, I'm not really gonna focus so much on the interior of this car or things like that. I already have a video of the 1.5 liter Malibu as well as the two liter Malibu where I get more into the infotainment, uh, which I do really like actually, so it's worth checking out that other video. But I wanna focus on the hybrid system in this video because it's actually really cool what they've done. So one of the things, now this is the hybrid system basically out of the Volt, but modified. And so one of the really cool things about it is they have something which they're calling exhaust gas heat recovery. And so there's a separate uh, essentially radiator or heat exchanger where you blow the exhaust gas through and then you have the engine coolant flowing through, through this heat exchanger. So the exhaust gas warms up the uh, coolant initially. So you have, you know, the engine block itself is gonna dissipate heat into the coolant, but you're gonna be able to warm it much faster by taking out some of the energy from the exhaust. So that gives you an engine which is going to warm up quicker and you'll have uh, cabin air that will be warmer quicker. And so that's one benefit, but the major benefit for this is because it's a hybrid vehicle. So if you think about exhaust gas heat recovery, for a non-hybrid vehicle that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the engine's always on and you always have waste heat. Well, for a hybrid vehicle, the goal is always to turn the engine off so that you're not using uh, any energy and you're not wasting fuel. And so with this, by having the exhaust gas heat up the engine coolant, when you're in a situation where you need heat because it's cold outside, you don't have to have the engine running because you've got more heat that's already been dumped into it from the exhaust gas. So you've recovered more of that energy and then you can put that into the cabin rather than just waste it out of the exhaust. And you don't have to have the engine always running even when it's cold outside. So I was kind of curious, you know, how much of a difference does this really make? And I was talking with one of the engineers who was responsible for the hybrid powertrain in this, and he was saying uh, in their cold climate testing where they test uh, basically the fuel economy uh, in 20 degrees Fahrenheit, they were able to save 10 miles per gallon uh, by using this exhaust gas heat recovery in this really cold condition because they're able to absorb more of that energy. Now, if it's hot outside, clearly it's not gonna be as useful because you don't necessarily need heat. So you don't have heat blowing on in the car and you know, you're know you gonna have the engine shut off anyways. But if it's cold outside and you need that heat because you're cold inside the car, then something like this system makes a ton of sense because you can use that uh, excess energy that you're otherwise just wasting and allow you to turn off the engine. So a very cool system. This car, uh, GM, estimates that it's going to be getting 48 in the city, 45 on the highway. So seriously competitive as far as hybrids go. Really nice fuel economy. When this light does turn green, I'll floor it just to see what happens. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty impressive package, the 1.8 liter, and also that they're not using an Atkinson cycle. Uh, but one of the other efficient things that they're doing is they also have another heat exchanger for the EGR. So the EGR also goes through a heat exchanger, and that helps to cool the EGR. Uh, so the exhaust gases are cooled before they put them back into the uh, engine. And so that helps with combustion stability. As you can see there, uh, it can spin the tires because it's an electric motor and electric motors have lots of torque. One of the other cool things about this uh, exhaust gas heat recovery system is that you don't have to use it. Now you're probably thinking, hey, if I'm always sending energy into the engine block, uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't want to send heat into the engine block when you don't need it because you want to cool the engine, obviously. So there's a bypass valve in there and so when the exhaust gas isn't needed to heat up the engine coolant, you can just have a bypass valve and it bypasses that heat exchanger. And I was asking the engineer about, you know, does this valve cause any restrictions? Is there a power loss associated with having it go through the heat exchanger? And it's been sized properly, so there's no impact on power, there's no impact on performance, uh, but rather, you just uh, get the benefit of wasted energy that you're uh, able to recover. And so that's really cool. I really like designs like that where you can pull out energy that is otherwise lost. From an efficiency standpoint, it's very cool technology. 
One of the other things they've done with the hybrid is that they now have a two mode system. And I think they're telling me, I could be wrong in this, but I believe they're saying they're the only ones with this two mode hybrid system. So at city speeds, you know, motors tend to just have one set uh, gear reduction. And so at city speeds, the electric motors will be rotating, you know, at fairly low speeds. But as you get onto the highway, those electric gears are now spinning faster. And as electric motors spin faster, they lose efficiency. And so what they've done with this, with the two mode system, is that when you do get into higher speeds, it switches over to essentially another uh, gearing. And so your engine and your motors spin at lower RPMs where they're more efficient. And so for both city and highway, they're able to optimize efficiency where otherwise, you know, at speed, efficiency tends to taper off. So as far as the brake pedal feel, it actually is a really seamless transition between going from, you know, using the electric regen to switching over to the disc brakes, however they do, uh, you know, apply that process. And so it hasn't been something that's felt all that different from a traditional vacuum assisted uh, non-hybrid engine uh, from that perspective. It does feel like there's a little bit less effort required overall, but it's a seamless transition where you don't notice, oh, you know, now I'm using regen, now I'm using disc brakes. Uh, for example, the Ford Fusion plug-in I drove and there was a very distinct point where it was like okay there's the disc brakes and it kind of slammed you and it was a little jerkiness to it uh, this has been very smooth um, some of the other hybrids out there have certainly been smooth uh, for example the Prius uh, the Mirai that I tested which was hydrogen um, and so those uh, had a very seamless brake pedal feel this also has that seamless brake pedal feel and it probably comes down to the fact that you know chevy's been doing this with the volt and so they've been able to tune it so that it isn't this you know strange artificial feeling in the brake pedal even though they could pretty much make it feel however they want so thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below